Hi, and welcome to part eight of the Scratch block code coding and game design tutorial. Uh, in this video, we are going to be covering building a second level and then having your items um, respawn in new locations in that second level. So basically, we're going to create a trigger that causes a second level to occur uh, using ver the points variable, and then we will design our second level. So let's start. Uh, first things first, let's click on our level sprite that we designed earlier. So that's this one right here. And let's click on costumes. So we click on costumes. You can see here, here's our original costume design for this level. So this is our level layout. And we are going to paint. So mouse over the choose a costume, click paint. We are going to name this costume. Notice this is automatically costume one. This is just going to be renamed to level two. There we go. Okay, so this is now costume level two and using the line tool with the same settings as before, outline black, uh, line thickness 10, we are going to start laying out level two. Um, let's create kind of a central, holding on the shift key, of course, to keep things straight, clicking on the end to create a continuous line. I'm gonna create kind of a little boxy room here. Um, and then just start kind of blocking in lines in, uh, in various places. To create some interesting, interesting shapes and, uh, and ways of moving around here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bring this out this out. I'm going to create a little pathway here. And maybe something like this, something like this. This is a more sort of an open area where you can maybe move around a little bit and then these are a little bit more constrained paths. Okay. So create a very basic second level design. Obviously, you don't need to copy this one. It's not that great. Um, I'd probably spend a little bit more time if I was developing my own actual game into coming up with a more interesting and uh, creative level design. But this works just fine for laying out just a basic noticeable change in the layout. Okay, so we got a second level. How are we going to basically make this thing trigger. So how do we make the costume change from level one to level two? Very simple. And uh, let's get down to uh, coding it out. So let's switch over to our code tab. Right now we just have three blocks. We have our when go flag clicked. We have our go to x y block which just sets this thing centered. And we set our points to zero. Now that we have multiple costumes, we have to think a little bit more about the look of this level. So we're going to click on our look section and we're going to go to switch costume. Um, we're going to grab that block switch costume to, and we're actually going to set it to level one because we always want the game to start at level one. So switch costume to level one lets us know that when we start the game, the game starts at the level one costume. Okay, next step. What we want to have happen is uh, we want basically once we've picked up all the donuts, so there's five donuts in total, which gives us five points. Once we have all five donuts uh, picked up, we want the level to switch to level two. Now this is a very, very basic trigger. You can make it more complex by adding sort of a door or whatever else you want, but we're gonna start with getting it to be a, just a basic when, five po when the game is at five points, switch to level two. So, this is what we do. Uh, we do this with a control block. Now, a wait until block is a new block. We haven't used it yet. I'm going to grab it and drop it out on the screen here. Um, a wait until block is really, really useful. So what a wait until block is, is basically a block of code that pauses the code that's running. So if we drop it right here, uh, Let's actually, we'll, we'll do one other thing before we start dropping it in there. But we have a wait until block. It'll basically, it, the code runs down, it hits the wait until block, 
And then as soon as the condition that is placed in there that we, we add in is met, then um, the code runs on from that point. So it's really useful for basically something that triggers once and never again. And it's a great way to sort of add this pause into your, into your code until a condition is met. Now before I put the wait until block in here and start showing you how to program it, I see that I'm missing um, one more variable that I have to create still. Now that we have two levels, we're going to actually add in a new variable called level so that we can use that variable for programming other parts of our game so we can check the, essentially what level we're on. Let's click on our dark orange circle here for variables. We have points and then my variable which we're not using. So click on my variable. This new variable will be called level. Leave it as all sprites. Okay. You can see it's right here. It just appeared here. So let's move this around. I think we're going to do level first, points. And then eventually we'll also have a lives variable. We're going to set the level to level 1 to start. Just drop it right underneath, right at the start there, underneath points. So we're going to set the level to 1 when the game starts. Perfect. Let's grab our wait until block, click it under there. And this is essentially where the pause is going to happen that we'll use to trigger level 2 in our level sprite. So here comes a totally new um, category of blocks we haven't played around yet. They're called operators. They are the green blocks. Now these are basically kind of could be described as math or uh, combination style blocks. Um, they're used to um, create a little bit sort of number based um, conditions. So we're going to wait until, in this case, um, we're going to use the equals operator right here. So wait until we have blank equals 50. So we're going to use points as uh, points as the variable. What's kind of cool is not all these spaces right here have to have a, a basically a number input. You can actually drop other blocks into spaces if they have this shape. So if we go to variables, you can see we now have level and points. So if we grab this points variable, this is actually a block in of itself. And we can put it in there. And now it will check if the points equal a certain number. So in this case, we have five items. So five donuts that each give us one point. Wait until points equal five. And that will be our trigger. We drop it in there. Operators are great for combining sort of multiple numbers or, um, or things that need to be checked. Um, and certainly when we get into enemies and lives, we're going to start nesting uh, operations together to create sort of longer, more complex ones. But this is our trigger. Wait until the points variable. Now, this is important. I can't click in here and write points, right? If I write points equals 5, it actually doesn't understand what that means. You have to use the points variable block so that it knows what it's checking. So it knows, oh, that's the points variable. What number is it? Okay. So we've got our set points to 0, set level to 1, switch cost into level 2, wait until points equal 5. And now we're going to add a couple more blocks to tell you what happens when points equals 5. So what we're going to do is first is go to looks, and we're going to switch that costume to level 2, right? So switch to level 2. So as soon as that points equals 5, bang, the level 2 costume appears, and the level 1 costume disappears. Perfect. We are also going to change the level by 1, right? We're on the next level, so we're going to change the level variable so it shows up as 2. Starts as 1, we change it by 1, and that equals 2. Okay, so we've got two things happening. Now there's one last thing we're going to add, and this is also a new block, under events. We're going to add this one right here at the bottom, which is a broadcast block. So I'm going to grab this. Broadcast message one. And broadcast is basically a message that goes out to all the other sprites in the game. Um, and if they have a block that says when I receive message one, they will then execute whatever code is attached to this. So this is really useful for if a certain trigger has occurred and you need a bunch of different sprites all to do actions based upon that, a broadcast is the perfect way of doing it. So we're going to broadcast a message called new message. Click on that. 
I'm going to call this message level 2. Okay. Now we are going to do a little bit of cool stuff. So we've added wait until points equals 5, then switch level to level 2, change level by 1, broadcast level 2. Let's give this a quick test. Move through 1 point, 2 points. Notice the level is set to one, two, three, and uh, moving down here to the bottom, five, right? Level has now switched. We're now in level two. But level two needs items. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to press stop. So we're going to reset this, then press stop. I'm going to click on my level design. Click on costumes. And as long as stop is clicked, this is possible. Click on level two to show level two. Um, and we're going to start moving these donuts around to new level 2 spots. So I'm going to grab this one, I'm going to move it here, grab these two, put them in here. Oh, this one has, has disappeared, I'm just going to make sure it's shown. Uh, click this one, move it here, this one here. Okay, so these are all the new positions of the donuts that I would like. And I'm going to click on the donuts. Click on code, and we're going to add a new little bit of code to each of these donuts. So, when I receive the level 2 broadcast, I'll go to looks. So, we'll set it to sh show. When I receive level 2, show. So, it'll make it reappear. And then we'll go to motion, and we'll go to the new, making sure that stop is press so that all of our um, uh, donuts show up in the right position that we've given them for level 2, go to that position. I'm just going to literally du duplicate that on all of these, show, and uh, when I receive level 2, go to this one, when I receive level 2, and actually just go through, drag and drop it on each of these and then come back around. So when I receive level 2, show, go to, go to, the order of this doesn't actually matter. Sometimes it does, but in this case it doesn't. Um, show, and go to. Now, these will all basically um, reappear in the new spots I need to in the new level. Let's give that a test. So moving through, click, collect, two points, three points, four points, and all the way down to get our fifth point here. Now, watch what happens. Level will change, and all these donuts will reappear in the new positions they needed to be in. Notice that apparently I left that donut there in the same position in that second level. There was a donut. Um, that's probably a bad move because it actually means I wouldn't have noticed picking up the donut in the second level. So I will go through and change that uh, as soon as I've done this. Full points 10, stop, reset. Okay, so I don't want a donut to appear there. Um, so i got to just figure out which donut that is. This is, uh, so let's, let's give it a quick test. That one, that one, that one, that one. And that one, this donut is donut three. So donut three, I'm just going to change its uh, position to over here, and uh, we'll just zoom in. So negative 142, negative 93 is this position, so I'm just going to change that right there. Negative 142, negative 93. There. Now it has an updated position for level two, and that's how you get your items to respawn um, respawn in your second level. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding some enemies and a lives variable into our game.